Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. Today, we're going to be showing you guys how to use the VR function inside of Premiere Pro. Now, this is the way of doing a true VR video. This is not uh, where some people uh, flatten it to a 2D image, but uh, we're going to keep the full 360 uh, video going. And the way that is best viewed, if you're going to be doing VR footage, the way that is best viewed is with, uh, with, is with a VR headset. Uh, something like the Oculus is one of the more common ones that, that people use to, uh, to view um, a video in 360 degrees. Now we're going to be showing you how to take a VR video from the camera all the way to uh, something like YouTube. YouTube is a very common is a very common medium for people to upload the VR videos, and then you can uh, choose to use those VR videos when you have your Oculus headset on. You can also view it just on a regular 2D monitor, uh, but it's going to but it won't it'll take away from the experience. You have to kind of grab the video and drag it around and uh, to to get the full 360. Where with an Oculus, you can just literally look all all the way around you as if you were there. So what I've got here, this footage was uh, shot on what's called an Insta360 camera. Uh, it's a kind of nice camera for the for the price. It um, it shoots in 6K, which is pretty decent quality and maintains the quality for when you are uh, looking at, at your footage in VR. So if you look at the footage here that I've transferred from the Insta360 camera, uh, they have these little files in here. The, these are non not what they call unstitched files here. Uh, that basically shoots uh, two cameras, one forward, one backwards. And what you need to do is it needs to do what's called stitching, where it takes these two kind of circular uh, video signals and it puts it into a full-on uh, 2D image. It's all stretched across a 16 by 9 image, which can be edited inside of Premiere. So these have to be stitched first. Some cameras will do in-camera stitching. These ones don't. It has a software. And oftentimes, if it requires stitching, most 360 cameras will come, will have its own software that you can download and do the stitching. And here is the Insta360. I'm going to grab my footage. I'm going to just grab this entire folder, drag it, and drop it into this area right there. And it will load the files. Okay, so here's the 360. And this is what I'm talking about. It, it does, it stretches it across this kind of 16 by 9 uh, image space here. It, it's basically two kind of circles that it has stretched across and now blended it all together. One cam this is, These are two different cameras, one in the front, one in the back that's uh, recorded two different images. Uh, it has 180 degrees uh, in front and 180 degrees behind it, and it's like stitched it all together into this flat uh, video file that can be used inside of Premiere. But now it has to be processed essentially and recorded. It has to be exported like this. So yeah, so right now this is 360 degrees on a flat uh, on a flat 16 by 9 2D image here video clip here. So I'm going to select the videos that I want to export and I'm going to uh, just these four right here, and then I'm going to right click on it and we're going to say batch export. Now, when you do this, uh, a couple of things have to be set, first of all. Uh, over here, you have to tell if you've had a lot of these uh, cameras, if you have a case on it. This had the Venture case on it right here. Uh, if you have a different types of cases, if it's if you don't have a case, you can just put it on normal. But you, it'll, it can see the line from the... Um, uh, from the casing there, so you have to tell it it's a venture case, and it will it'll uh, remove that uh, line. Uh, I always keep the stabilization on in here and the venture case. If you're not doing the venture case, once again, you can just click normal if you don't have a case on it. So now I can right click and go batch export, and uh, this takes up a lot more hard drive space. But I found that if you use ProRes rather than H.264, H.265, H.265 takes a really long time to encode. But uh, ProRes 422 it encodes it uh, at a decent ra at rate. At it's especially for an image that is 6K, uh, ProRes 422 plays back a lot smoother than H.264. This is an optimized codec. This is These two are not optimized codecs. So the optimized codec will play back a lot smoother, even though it's uh, even, even though it has a lot more, even though it takes up a lot more hard drive space. So you're going to change the location where you want to save it. I've already done this, but I'm going to put it in my, I made a new folder called ProRes, and I'm going to put it in that ProRes folder and hit OK, and it will begin the stitching process, and it will export the videos out to ProRes, convert them to ProRes in this uh, 2D uh, flattened image here. So once that's done, I don't need my Insta footage anymore. All I would need is my ProRes footage, and I can grab these clips here and drop them into Premiere and begin. So here's the clip that I want to edit. I'm going to grab that and drop it into a new timeline. But right now, it's showing in kind of this uh, two, big 2D flattened image right here. So all you have to do is you go up to the wrench in your program monitor, and you go to VR Video, and you Enable. And I'll put it into this uh, kind of square square space here, and what you can do is you can grab this and drag it around, and this will look all the way around in 360. You can look down, you can look up, you can look to the left, you can look to the right, and it is now looking at this in a big kind of globe 360 surrounding uh, your viewpoint, your camera viewpoint here. A couple things that I kind of like to do on this is first of all, I go under settings 
go into VR video and go into the settings right here. So go into the wrench, VR video, settings, and I'm going to change. I kind of like it a little bit wider on the horizontal view. So I'm going to change this. It lets you do three, 180 degree, 100, up to 180 degrees of uh, view space here. So I'm going to crank up the, the horizontal space all the way to 180 degrees. And that gives me a little bit more viewer. So I'm kind of looking like I'm uh, looking at a regular video window, 16 by 9 viewer sort of thing. I'm going to mute this for a second here and as I play this back. But as you play this back here, you'll notice that you can just grab this video and you can drag it and you can look all the way around in 360 degree space, which is pretty cool. And as I mentioned, the experience will be best when you finally export this out if you view it on something like an Oculus or VR headset. Otherwise, on YouTube, you're going to be looking at it like this. You're dragging it around, looking up, down, left, right uh, by simply dragging it. So now I can just go ahead and edit my video like I would a normal video. Kind of get it in the viewpoint that you kind of want to see things in. And then you can start cutting your video uh, together here. Do a fade in at the beginning and perform my editing. And you can put dissolves in it like you would a regular video as well. Perform cuts and cut out the footage that you don't want and keep the footage in that you do want. Once you're done editing, of course, you have regular effects and everything that you can use. If you're going to be doing color grading, you can go under color and color grade your project as well. If you need any more contrast or, or add a lot or anything like that, you can do that with a lumetri color panel. So these act very much like, like a, very, very similar to, to video. There are... Under effects, there are some very specific VR effects. If you type in VR, it will narrow this down to, to different types of transitions you can do between videos uh, that, that are built for the VR space, and also these uh, video effects as well. I've played with a little bit of these, and these I, I haven't been too impressed by, and there's a couple of them. If you add them, it really takes a toll on the system, like the VR Glow TC. It really seems like it takes a big toll on the system, and it, and it lags and chugs and doesn't do a very good job. And then when you're exporting out the video, it takes a super long time to export out the video so uh, but one thing you could do is titles in here as well you can add titles I think one thing that Premiere needs to do is add th there's some workarounds to get uh, via to get your titles to work a little bit better but you have to kind of work with some uh, add some spherical effects to make it uh, work pro uh, properly but it doesn't work it's not too bad if you use graphics in here though if you go to the uh, graphics layout so if you go to the graphics mode, and first of all, to add a graphic, if you hit the T, it's not going to let you add it in here. So you have to actually put this back to the regular view. You get out of the VR view. and you, So you go and check mark the enable and disable it. And go back to this view. And then you can type in your uh, graphic here. So once you do that, you can center it. And kind of center it on screen if you wish. See, and where I think it might work is a little bit more contrasty over the, over the granite there. So I'm going to... Make that a little bit bigger. And you have to be careful how big you make this because if you make it too big, then it's uh, when you're looking in the VR headset, you have to kind of scan a whole 180 degrees to view it. So I'll make it about right there. There we go. Let's put a fade in, fade out on that. I'll do a Command D and make it fade in and fade out. So we'll fade in and then fade out. And here the text looks normal, but what it will do is when you view this in VR, and it looks better with with headsets once again, but if you enable VR, it's going to look uh, curved around because it's curving around a globe, a 360 degree globe. So, But like I said, that will look a lot better when you're inside of the VR headset. But if you're looking at it on a 2D screen like this, it's going to have that curved look to it. And see how it cuts that off in my in my viewer screen here because I'm always looking at 180 degrees, and this was a little, far, little uh, longer than 180 degrees. So we could change the size of that, make it smaller if you're intending to look on a 2D screen, but if you're looking at it in VR space, this will work just fine. So once you're finished editing and you're ready to export, there is a couple things you have to do here. So I'm going to go to my timeline here. I'm going to hit Command-M, or it would be Control-M on a PC, and my export window will pop up. And if I'm going to be going to YouTube, YouTube, uh, a very supported format is H.264, where the file is not going to be super huge, but it will still be a decent quality. We're going to go H.264. For this to have a really, uh, really good quality and not look too compressed, since this is 6K footage, you really kind of have to up the, uh, up the bit depth here. So I'm going to go to video here, and I'm going to scroll down under video. And uh, right here, if you do it at just this default 10 and 12 uh, megabits per second, this is going to be a really bad, this is going to be really compressed footage for 6K. Uh, so I'm going to click on this. So I'm going to grab the target bit rate, and I usually do it around like 100. And then uh, if you're going to be doing a two pass, you can do this maybe at 150. Two pass will take more than twice the amount of time to export it, but it will look a lot better. It will have it'll, the size of the file will be uh, smaller, and the quality will look better as well. So I usually do a two pass, especially if I'm not in a hurry.
Other thing you have to make sure that is check mark as you scroll down. This is automatically detected that this is a, a VR video. Now you can do different types of VR. Uh, if you're doing stereoscopic, this are, these are mostly for stereoscopic is mostly for 180 degree view. If you have two cameras looking forward instead of one backwards, one forward, you can do. Uh, if you have one on top of the other, you can do over under or if it's side by side like your eyes, you can choose that. But this is not stereoscopic. This is not in 3D. This is monoscopic, which means it has a single camera forward, single camera backward. It doesn't have two cameras side by side. So I'm going to go monoscopic. If it's a regular 360 degree camera, it's pretty much always going to be monoscopic. And then you do uh, video is VR. Then you click on the name, find a location you want to save it. And then you find a location and you name it whatever we want to name it. Hit save and then hit export and it will start exporting it. Once that's finished, you can test this. I, I will use VLC to test it. VLC supports a 360 degree video. So when we open this up in VLC, VLC will know that this is a VR video and you can grab this with your mouse and drag it around and look up and down. And if you're in a VR headset now and you load this to your VR headset, you can just simply look all the way around, look up, down, left, right, wherever you want to. And it moves as you move your, as you move your head and it makes it feel like you're actually there. So now you can upload that to you, directly to your Oculus. And there's a really nice uh, free software for Oculus called Skybox. Skybox VR uh, is a media player. It basically puts it in like a theater and you can watch it in a, in a theater. But then you go, you will go under and it will detect if it's VR videos as well. You can go into your VR videos and it will automatically uh, detect it. And you can actually uh, change the settings if you're doing 180 degree 3D stereoscopic or if you're doing just a regular monoscopic uh, 360 degree video. You can change those settings in there and view it in the proper in the proper fashion. Otherwise, you can set, upload this file to YouTube. YouTube will detect also that it is a VR video because you had that VR video box checkmarked in Premiere Pro. Then it will be capable of switching to VR within YouTube. And then if you watch it on YouTube on a regular screen, once you upload it to YouTube, uh, you'll have this little controller up here in the corner. If you're watching on a regular 2D screen, you can click and drag this. You can click on these little arrows and it will change your viewpoint. Or you can just simply grab the screen with this hand here and just move it around where you want it, want to view. And it actually does it pretty smoothly as well. And you can go full screen and do the same thing, move it around. And, and you can do this while the video is playing. And you can click on the settings here. And this was shot in, this is playing back in 4K, but you can click on it and tell it to play back in the original resolution. This says 5K, it's a little bit under 6K, but it is the original resolution of the clip that I've uploaded. And of course, once again, the best way to view this is going to be through a VR headset. Also, if you want to watch this clip in VR, I will include the link in the description. So make sure to click on that and watch it. And if you have any questions, uh, just let me know.